And joining us now for insights is Ruthie Blum. She's a former advisor at the office of Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu and a senior contributing editor at the Jewish News Syndicate now. Thank you so much for joining us, Ruthie. Uh, just to start Thank with- Thank you for having me. Yeah, just moments ago, Hezbollah said that it fired over 200 rockets into Israel today. Um, that's after, as we just heard, Israel killed a senior commander of the terrorist group. So tensions are rising. I just want to put it to you to start with, is Israel ready for war with Hezbollah? Okay, well, first of all, uh, if you're asking me if Israel is ready militarily, I don't have inside information on that. Uh, the real question is, is Israel ready in other ways to do it? We are in a catch-22 here. And by the way, today it wasn't just 200 rockets. There were drones, there were landings, there was an interception uh, and shrapnel landed on a nursery school. And luckily the children were in the bomb shelter when that happened. Uh, there, you know, there's an ongoing assault from Hezbollah. Now, the question is this, Iran doesn't want a full-scale war. Iran does not want Israel to destroy Hezbollah, which is its soldiers, its foot soldiers to protect the nuclear program. Mm -hmm. uh, Hezbollah doesn't want to get destroyed. Lebanon doesn't want to look like Gaza. And Israel doesn't want the kind of retaliation that would send missiles, very, very uh, precise and heavy missiles into the center of Israel, the way it's doing in the north. So right at the moment, everybody is sort of stuck in this war of attrition. But I can tell you, we have to go to war with Hezbollah or no Israeli will return to his or her home in the north. Um, and we will have basically ceded territory to Lebanon in this way. Yeah, there is a situation where many Israelis have fled that area just to get away from the conflict that keeps rising there. Um, there are reports that Hezbollah says that if there's a ceasefire in Gaza, that they will stop their offensive. Do you think that negotiators could rely on their word here? First of all, you can't rely on the word of any terrorist organization. Do you realize that in 2006, Hezbollah agreed to Resolution 1701, which stated that there would be, uh, you know, UNIFIL and other forces along the Lebanon-Israel border to prevent Hezbollah from coming south of the Litani River and from rearming. Well, that agreement lasted about five minutes. Uh, the international troops absconded as soon as Hezbollah fighters and terrorists started marching around. And they, in the meantime, have amassed uh, hundreds of thousands of rockets. So you cannot trust them at all. Also, you know, this is a big lie about this. Well, if Israel ceases firing in Gaza, then Hezbollah will, okay, will agree not to fire on you. This is not a way to have deterrence against your enemies. And what they mean by a ceasefire in Gaza is for us to allow Hamas to remain in power. That is absolutely ridiculous and also impossible. Yeah, you mentioned Iran early on here, and it is a big player in this whole conflict. Considering Iran's, um, you know, vendetta against Israel and the U.S., what really needs to be done here to bring this all to a close? Well, you know, <laughs> that's an excellent question. I mean, I would have answered, I can answer now what I think I've been saying for many years, is that without attacking Iran, and I don't mean the people of Iran, of course, I mean uh, defeating the regime, both helping the people of Iran to defeat the Ayatollah-led regime, but also to attack all of Iran's nuclear facilities. Uh, I've been saying that for years. I don't have a different opinion now. I know that one of the problems with the West fighting terrorist regimes is that we like to follow the rules and terrorist regimes don't have any rules. So we're always at this, uh, this loss. We're also afraid that if we do that, we'll endanger our own citizens. Um, and in any case, at the moment, there's not a there's not an administration in Washington um, that agrees with that. You have an administration in Washington that's been trying to go back to the nuclear deal with Iran, which we saw was really uh, the worst possible uh, yeah. deal. And it had been ripped up by former President Trump. And then President Biden, you know, went yeah. back to trying to 
negotiate it. So certainly you know, a point of contention yeah. across the the administrations. But your suggestion of uh, attacking Iran's nuclear facilities, I have not heard that before. Thanks for your unique uh, approach here. Ruthie Blum, great to hear from you. Thank you so much. And now we turn to voters in the UK.